Hello, my name is Dr. Bill Gray, and I'm pleased to give the TOBA2 12-month data results at the VIVA late-breaking clinical trials. Before we get into those results, I think it's important to establish the foundational principle of the trial, which is that dissection is the primary mechanism of angioplasty. When we approach a lesion with a balloon, we see that uh, during balloon inflation, there are torsional and axial forces exerted by the balloon, the net result of which is to improve vessel stenosis, but through the mechanism of dissection. And we know that lesions with dissections have a TLR rate 3.5 times greater than lesions without dissection. So dissection has an implication for long-term outcome. And the current tools for dissection repair have limitations. The TAC and DeVascular system was specifically designed to address the stent drawbacks that we use today to treat dissection with novel designs. Specifically, it's a six millimeter deployed length self-sizing night null device which fits the vessel diameters between 2.5 millimeters and six millimeters. It has a unique anchoring mechanism which minimizes migration during deployment and there are gold markers for visibility. In this animation, you're gonna see the tact deployed and increasing vessel size from a single device. And you can see the tacks fit the vessel that they're being implanted into quite easily. The tack is different from a traditional stent in that the force curve generated by the tack is significantly different. A traditional stent, when compressed, will exert increasing force with increasing levels of compression, such that once the stent is severely compressed, the outward radial force is quite high. This differs in the tack in that as you compress the tack, the outward radial force is flat and that you don't see increasing force curve over that increase in compression. The biologic outcome of that is significant. First of all, there's much less inflammation in the tack as compared to the stent because of these high radial outward forces. And as a result, you see much less chronic hyperplastic changes as demonstrated in the histologic slide in the third panel. Metal burn is significantly less with six millimeter length design open cell as compared to the stents which have 70% more metal to treat the same types of lesion lengths. Sizing is also much easier. A single device will treat a vessel size from 2.5 to 6 millimeters as compared to a stent which requires a much more precise sizing matrix. Before we get into the TOBA2 trial, it's important to recognize where the TOBA2 pivotal trial fits in the larger uh, cadre of trials being done with this device. The TOBA2 trial is the pivotal trial for the above the knee application of the device. But note that there are also below the knee trials underway. And in fact, the TOBA2 pivotal BTK trial is nearly completed its enrollment. In total, over 2,500 tacks and 750 patients with post-PT dissection have been implanted in the clinical regulatory research environment. The TOBA2 study design is listed here. It's a prospective multicenter single arm study which is non-blinded in both Europe and the U.S. There were 213 subjects, all with post-PTA dissection, and we're going to go into that in more detail in a moment, following either balloon angioplasty with 90 patients or lutonix angioplasty and 123 patients. The choice of POBA or DCB was made by the operator. The primary safety endpoint is typical with the freedom from occurrence of any new onset MAE at 30 days, including index limb amputation, CEC adjudicated TLR, or all-cause death. Primary efficacy endpoints are again typical with a primary patency of 12 months represented by a freedom from CEC adjudicated clinically driven TLR and the freedom from core lab adjudicated Doppler ultrasound derived binary stenosis as defined by a PSVR of greater than or equal to 2.5. There are also key observational endpoints which we'll go through in this trial including freedom from CEC adjudicated clinically driven TLR TAC performance, including dissection resolution, migration, and fracture, and the changes in Rutherford ABI and quality of life measures for patient outcomes. It can't be emphasized enough that this is an incredibly unique trial. It is the first and only pivotal trial ever to enroll 100% dissected vessels. Specifically, patients in the trial underwent balloon angioplasty. If the patient did not have a dissection, they were excluded from this trial. This is almost opposite in what occurs in most other trials. If the patient did have a dissection, moderate or severe, they would have been excluded from prior trials, Levant 2, Impact SFA, and Illuminate. But in Toba True, all of those 
previously excluded patients were included in this trial. I want to give thanks to all sites across Europe and U.S. 33 sites enrolled incredibly well and are the primary reason for us to be able to share these excellent results today. The key eligibility criteria are listed here. The RVD had to be between 2.5 and 6 millimeters inclusive. Lesions had to be de novo or non-stented restenotic lesions in the SFA or proximal popliteal artery. In lesions of 70 to 99 percent, lesion length was allowed between 20 and 150 millimeters. For 100 percent occluded lesions, the length was allowed less than 10 centimeters. There had to be the presence of at least one patent infrapopliteal vessel. And the post-PTA residual after final balloon angioplasty had to be less than or equal to 30 percent plus there had to be the presence of at least one dissection of any grade between A and F. The exclusion criteria are listed here. Previous bypass in the target limb, acute or subacute thrombosis and or occlusion, post-PTA residual of greater than 30% and severe calcification. Here are the key baseline patient and lesion characteristics and noteworthy in this chart are the following. Diabetic patients comprised over 40% of the patient population. Target lesion length was over seven centimeters. And calcification of moderate severity was over 50% of the patients, and moderate severe calcification was noted in over 60% of the patients. The primary endpoints are listed here. The safety endpoint, the 30-day freedom from MAE, was met with a very robust p-value. Efficacy endpoints were also met with the primary patency at 12 months, remembering that that is the freedom from clinically driven TLR plus the freedom from binary stenosis were met also with robust p-values. This is a Kaplan-Meier chart of the primary patency of 12 months in the 100% dissected vessel population. Primary patency was 79.3%. Freedom from clinically driven TLR at 12 months, again in the 100% dissected population, was over 86%. Let's look now at the dissection severity pre-TAC. The total number of dissections in this population was 369. The number of dissections per subject was 1.8. The mean dissection length was 20 millimeters. When we look at the distribution of dissection across this 100% dissected population, we see that a significant majority of these patients had a dissection of C or greater, nearly three quarters of them. When we look at post-TAC implantation, we see that over 92% of all dissections of any grade were completely resolved with the TAC as adjudicated by the core lab. And you can see in this representative angiogram, a C grade dissection as uh, adjudicated by the core lab treated with two tacks in the middle panel. You can see the two arrows pointing at the tack. And then in the final panel on the right, you can see a complete resolution of dissection and a very pleasing angiogram. Tack stability and durability are listed here. The total number of tacks implanted in this trial was 871. The total number of dissections per subject was 1.8, as mentioned previously. And the number of tack implants per subject was 4.1. Remarkably, the bailout stent rate in this 100% dissected population was 0.5%, with only one patient in 213 receiving a stent. Freedom from TAC fracture at 12 months was 100%, and freedom from TAC migration was 99.9%. Important in the outcomes of these patients are their clinical improvement. You can see here that there was a marked improvement from baseline Rutherford classification to 12 months. We see marked improvements in ankle brachial index from baseline to 12 months, as well as in patient satisfaction. It's natural to ask the question about this combined population of all dissection patients, since some of them were treated with POBA and some of them were treated with DCB, and we've broken down the patency in this chart. When we look at the two groups in this trial, we can see that the groups are different, not surprisingly since the operators had a choice between POBA and DCB. These are not randomized arms. The lesion length in the TOBA2 POBA group was about six centimeters as compared to the TOBA2 DCB arm, which was eight and a half centimeters, so longer lesion in the DCB arm. More total occlusions in the DCB arm, almost a third of the patients versus less than 10% of the patients in the POBA arm, but this dissections were distributed roughly equivalently between the two groups. And we see that the DCB arm performed admirably with 72% patency at 12 months, and the TOBA2 POBA arm had a remarkable outcome with nearly 90% patency at 12 months. We're going to line that up against historical patency of POBA in a moment. If you look at the Levant 2 POBA arm and compare it to the TOBA 2 POBA group, you can see that 
The lesion lengths were roughly similar, but the total occlusions were more in the Levant II poba arm. Dissections, however, predominated in the uh, Toba II poba group. So from a complexity standpoint, they're roughly similar in complexity, trading uh, occlusions for dissection. And as a historical reference, the Levant II poba arm is actually in line with most other poba arms in the DCB trials at a roughly 56%. Comparatively, the Toba II poba arm had a nearly 90% patency, more than 30% greater than historical POBA patency in this population. Now let's look at the DCB arm of TOBA versus the DCB arm of Levant II. The DCB group in TOBA uh, had a longer lesion by about two centimeters, had more CTOs, and had, by definition, more dissection than the Levant II DCB arm, therefore representing a much more complex group of patients. And even in this complex group of patients, patency between the two groups was similar. So in conclusion, TOBA-2 was a very unique trial and the first to enroll 100% dissected vessels. And in this trial, we see that the TAC successfully met its primary and safety efficacy endpoints and demonstrated that it effectively repairs dissection after POBA and DCB with minimal metal, low radial force, stable and durable design, and preservation of future treatment options with an incredibly low bailout stent rate of 0.5%. The high patency rate of almost 80% and the high freedom from clinically driven TLR of over 86% position the TAC to be a clinically important treatment option for focal dissection repair after balloon angioplasty.